you have many experiences in regards to um, record labels and with CTI Records, it is regarded as one of the most successful jazz labels of all times and you appeared on most of the recordings, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, is there a record that sticks out in your mind and if so, why? And as well, how did your experiences from both the Blue Dot record labels and CTI differ from each other? Let me answer that question backwards. Um, okay. The Blue Note recordings were always rehearsed. We'd meet at, the, uh, at a rehearsal studio and rehearse from 2 to 6 on Tuesday or Wednesday or Wednesday and Thursday and record at Rudy Van Gelder's all day Friday with the, until the recording was finished. Uh, the CTI records were always, you walk in and play the music. Um, my rehearsal was to, on the way to the recording session, turn the radio on and see what tune was hot for the day because that would be on the CTI label recording session for that day. Um, I think one of the things that made the CTI label so successful was the covers. The covers were fat were fabulous. You know, my covers got an Indian head nickel in a container. And one of Bill Jackson's has an uh, ostrich in the sunset. Uh, sunset. Um, Freddie Hubbard's got his own kind of cover. I think the other thing that made the label successful was that the CTL went on tour. We toured Japan twice, and we played Hawaii, we toured Europe a couple of times, and we toured the States. So the people who bought these CTI records would actually see those same players in their local concert hall. Uh, I, I don't quite understand why the other jazz labels never um, followed that path. Uh, it seemed as if they were not interested in having a label as successful. Um, but that was the primary difference between those two labels. The first part of your question, I, I, I have had a a difficult time answering because it refers to all those records I made and do I have a favorite one of those? And my answer is always, um, I've done so many of them that I would hate to think that if I say this one is my particular favorite, that those producers and guys on those other 25 records would call my house and bang on my door until I got their name included in that list. <laughs> so uh, that they would call me knowing how many choices they had is always pleased me. In regards to that, well, I guess since you've had so many musical experiences as well, in terms of like awards, et cetera, would it be hard for you to say that there's one that sticks out in your mind as well? Because you have said so many in relation to the recordings? I would probably answer the same way. Uh, you know, each, each of those records, it's like going to school for me, a class, in that they have different personalities, the recording session has different personnel. The music has its own personalities in itself. It's a different engineer. It's a different day of the week. It's a different studio. Uh, all those factors make each day, each recording session, each album, an event in itself. And I've always treated those sessions as going to school free. I mean, I've learned how to, how to. Uh, maybe talk more kindly to people, you know. I've learned how to uh, not comment on something. And I've learned how to uh, make the date go a different direction because of my commentary or because of my music. I've learned how certain people write music that I've planned a Benny Golson recording session, for example. Uh, I've learned uh, how to listen to a playback so I can play my part better the next time. So for me, it's a matter of having 2,500 free lessons. <laughs>